Yahovah is still on his throne. Prayer changes everything, and praise can move mountains. Lord Yehovah, let us be attentive to your word every day, humble and obedient, that we will become vessels of your honor. Over the years, I've had an ongoing vision of the new Eden. In this vision, I see trees standing on either side of a crystal clear river. When I first saw the vision of the trees, they were small and they were fighting each other to grow. Some were a little older than others, but they were all in a desperate struggle against one another to establish themselves. Isaiah 55, 11 through 13 so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. For it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This has gone on for many years. It has not been until recently that the trees in the vision that had strained to reach up to the light grew tall and straight. All the while, those trees that strained to grow towards other things grew gnarled and twisted by their own desires. Also, there were those trees that strained to block the light from others and those grew lopsided, and therefore unstable, as any strong wind could blow those trees to and fro. Because of the epic struggle of the trees, the water in the river grew bitter and turbulent. Exodus 15 verse 23 now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara, which actually means bitter waters. Moving on now to Ruth 1, starting at verse 19. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem, and it happened when they had come to Bethlehem, that all the city was excited because of them, and the woman said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. Moving now to John 7, verses 37 through 39. And this is the promise of the Holy Spirit. On the last day, that great day of feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Deuteronomy 29, verses 15 through 25. But with him who stands here with us today before the Lord our God, 
as well as with him who is not here with us today. For you know that we dwelt in the land of Egypt, and that we came through the nations which you passed by. And you saw their abominations and their idols, which were among them, wood and stone, silver and gold, so that there may not be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, and that there may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. And so it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blesses himself in the heart, saying, I shall have peace, even though I follow the dictates of my heart, as though the drunkard could be included with the sober. The Lord would not spare him, for then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy would burn against that man, and every curse that is written in the book would settle upon him. And the Lord Yehovah would blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord Yehovah would separate him from all the tribes of Israel for adversity, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law so that the coming generation of your children who rise up after you and the foreigner who comes from a far land would say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord has laid on it, the whole land is brimstone, salt and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there, like they overthrew I'm sorry, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. And actually, they have plotted it. They've, they've actually found Sodom and Gomorrah. And to this day, there is nothing growing there. It's a desert. It is covered with rocks of brimstone. In which brimstone is, is like sulfur when it burns. It burns very hot. <clears throat> Actually, it is sulfur. All the nations would say, Why has the Lord done so to this land? What does this heat of this great anger mean? Then the people would say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, Jehovah, which he made with them when they, he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Moving on now to Exodus 15, verses 24 through 26. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and when he cast that tree into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them, and said, If you diligently heed the voice of Jehovah your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am Jehovah who heals you. Ezekiel 36 verses 34 through 36 The desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by, so they will say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. When the nations which are left all around you, then the nations which are left all around you, shall know that I, Yehovah, have rebuilt the ruined places, and planted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. 
As I've watched the trees growing over the years, I have seen them change in this vision significantly. The word has done a good washing over the years. Several years ago, an apostle by the name of Robert Dixon came to our church and gave a very powerful message about three days. He said that the Lord has given us three days in which to prepare, for he comes again on the morrow, and when he returns there will be no more time left for those who failed to get ready. Those who failed to take that time given to prepare themselves. When he comes again, those wise and faithful servants will be made like unto him. He also gave a warning for those who have lost their anointing to get back and find their lost coin, for their bridal cap needs to be complete. A coin, just like a feather, signed or signified a spiritual mantle or gift that had been lost due to iniquity, misuse or using it for personal gain, or just plain no use like the wicked servant who buried his coin instead of using it. <clears throat> In biblical times, the ancient Israelites rehearsed every year the coming of the new year as had been done in the same manner for hundreds and hundreds of years before that. This typified the coming of the Messiah in many ways. Everyone would set aside a fresh new white robe and preparations to celebrate the calling of the new year in what we call spring. At that time they all waited awaited the, the high priest to call out the Aviv barley. Aviv means that the barley harvest is perfectly ripe and ready to harvest to make bread. The priests were trained to monitor the barley and, gave, and give the call out to others from the Temple Mount when the time was right. Therefore, the exact time of the new year varied from year to year. This was God's prescribed manner in which to reckon the passage of years. Unfortunately, after the temple was destroyed and the people were scattered all over the world, this manner of reckoning God's time was forgotten until very recently when some faithful servants implemented astronomy astronomy to chart the past years according to their study of the Aviv barley reckoning system that would actually be Michael Rood <laughs> now at that time this was the only I'm sorry it was the pagans who had reckoned the years by the revolution of the earth around the sun and through subsequent constellations so in actuality the world took over was uh, was um our world system we began to reckon our time the believers and the non-believers reckon our time together with the world system of following stars and planets and things of that nature which is wholly apart from god's reckoning of time so now, around the third month on our calendar, the priests began monitoring the, bar the barley fields in order to determine when they were ready for harvest. At that point, once the barley was perfectly ripe, the call would go out from the Temple Mount and everyone would go ahead and stop doing whatever it was they were doing. Hence, Jesus' quote, that two will be in the field and one shall be taken up while the other left. Matthew 24 verses 40 through 44 or actually through 51. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. 
Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But I know this, that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. This signifies two brides, one who will be working for her own glory and personal gain without dedication to Christ, and the other bride who longs for him coming and strives every day to prepare for his coming because that bride has a heart for Christ and is devoted and faithful and has not swayed off into idolatry. Picking up again at verse 45, Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master has made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant for whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying in his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now this reminds me of a story from a Jewish rabbi who explained the whole concept of the thief coming in the night. This concept is not regarding the rapture, not necessarily. This concept is actually regarding the temple priests who would guard the fire in the temple during the night. Now, the night would be, in actuality, signifying this dark time, the wicked times that we are in. Now, during the night, there would be a priest that would be set inside the temple to make sure <laughs> to make sure that the fire did not go out now sometimes at night the high priest would enter to make sure that the priest had not fallen asleep on the job now if the priest didn't fall asleep then the high priest would just go on about his business however if the priest had fallen asleep The high priest would take a coal from the fire and set it near enough to catch the the linen of the sleeping priest's clothing, um, the linen ephod. It would set that on fire eventually and not burn, you know, hot enough to burn the person, but, you know, it would it would consume the clothing. So once his clothing, you know, He would wake up at some point, you know, one would think that he would wake up at some point or, you know, the next morning. He would wake up and um, he would be in a compromised state of dress. So he would have to face the shame of returning home without a covering and everyone would see that, you know, he had not done his job. So, um... Getting back to the other portion is uh, these people who were ready for the call. Oh, I'm sorry. These would be the people who took that time to prepare themselves. And they were actively watching and waiting for the Lord to come. And those who were, you know, basically sleeping on the job or... Um, going about doing their own thing those would be the ones that would be consumed so now getting back to the mention of the aviv barley and the you know to to 
describe when the new year would come. Um, once the priests called out the new year and called out Aviv Barley, the people who were ready, they would run home and bathe and don their fresh white robes and run out into the streets to participate in the festivities to come. And this was as rehearsed each new year. This proclamation of the Aviv had been done for many hundreds of years before Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, was even born. And they would take palm fronds and form a procession following the priests from the east gate on up to the temple. This actually is where we get our um, Palm Sunday festivities from. Now, going to Matthew 21, starting at verse 4. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought a donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on him, and set him on them. And the very great multitudes spread their clothes upon the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed, crying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of Yehovah. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of the Nazar of, from Nazareth of Galilee. Remember, because of that rehearsed festivities that they had been doing year by year to year, they were expecting the temple priest to be on the donkey, not Jesus or Yeshua. Picking back up again at verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out to him in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were furious. And they said to him, Do you hear the, what these are saying? And Jesus said, Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you will have perfected praise for they will see him as he is. Everyone at this time was very familiar with this custom, as it had been rehearsed every year since the reckoning of time began. Unfortunately, it had become an involuntary custom, enacted by the high priests each year, with little care that God initiated this to teach the people to be ready for the coming Messiah. The people were to be educated to know that it was the Messiah, not just another dead religious custom that was, that was done by the people every year just out of habit, with no real thought and no real devotion at all. Luke 19, starting at verse 30, going up to verse 50, saying, Go into the village opposite you, Whereas you enter, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose that colt and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? You shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent on their way found it, and just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And when they brought him to Jesus, 
they threw down their clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Price, or I'm sorry, peace in heaven and glory to the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him and said from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. <clears throat> now at this, po- at this point, Jesus begins to weep over Jerusalem. Picking back up again, verse 41. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and, weeped, and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon the other, because you did not know the time of your visitation. At that point, he begins to cleanse the temple. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple. But the chief priests, scribes, and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him. But they were unable to do anything, for all the people were very attentive to hear from him. The people were hungry, because they were not being taught what was appropriate. They were not being taught anything more than just come and serve the priests, and glorify the priests. Which the priest's job was to educate the people to follow Yehovah, not themselves. So when Christ came upon the donkey in humility, and this, he, I'm sorry, and his disciples called out in the name of the Lord all the things that he had done, the people ran out and did as they were used to doing as custom with no true understanding that this was their true Messiah. Hence the reason for him crying, or perhaps he cried, because the priests had trained the people to worship themselves and be in bondage to religious rituals and traditions instead of showing them the empowerment and the peace of the Spirit of God. Now we look back at the old times and wonder how great godly men such as Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Moses knew what to do to please God the Father without churches to teach them. Now, we have mainstream religion that has no answer that is suitable to effectively... There's nothing that they have that suitably answers that question. This is because religion is only man's attempt to reach God in which it's ineffective. It's halted by the fact that man cannot reach God all on his own. Religion says that if you study and do, you will get there. But no one can know the word through and through and do every, every single ritual. And, you know, you do all of these things that religion tells you to do and still miss God because you focus on the natural and you're ignoring the things of the spirit. We have to, in this, in this period of time, we are supposed to worship Yehovah in 
the natural, and also in the spirit. But religion just ignores the spirit. And when they do, when they do pay attention to the spirit, they they sway off into this Eastern mysticism and and strange things that are not God. Now our fa- our forefathers knew God. They walked in the cool of the day, just as Adam and Eve did before the fall. Now our fa- our forefathers heard the spirit of God as they walked and talked with Him. They existed with Him, with Jehovah as friends, brethren, hand in hand. And that is what it means to walk with the Lord in the cool of the day, as is stated in Genesis. Joel 2, verses 2 through 4. A day of darkness, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people come, great and strong, like of them has never been seen, nor will ev- nor will there ever be such like after them, even for many successive generations, because a fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing will escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and the like of them as swift steeds, so they run. Moving now to Second Peter 3, starting at verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you be? in holy conduct and in godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, Yehovah, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things, in which some things are hard to understand, which the untaught and the unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also wrestle with the scriptures. These would be the false prophets who twist scripture to their own meanings. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. And also going to Jude, starting at verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion without making a distinction which would be without prejudice. 
but those on others, I'm sorry, but on others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh, and that would be carnality. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present yourselves faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God and Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Now I would like to conclude with a prophetic unction that I saw on, you know, the April 16th, 2012. All of creation is groaning for the manifestations of the Son of God. The manifestation is for the children of Father Yah, Yehovah, to take back the dominion of that the serpent stole from Adam and Eve in Eden. Unplug your ears, and wipe the dirt from your eyes, and understand that my word is not just a collection of stories and rules to better your life. My word is your manual to learn of me. Do as I do. Submit to my spirit and feed it with my word. Feed your spirit with my word, that you will transform as you learn more of me. Feed your spirit with my word that you will transform as you learn more of me. Grow in strength, increase in wisdom, advance bit by bit that you over time will become more and more like me. More and more like me you become. The more dominion you will have over the world and you will possess. My angels are set to control the heavens. My angels maintain the sun, moon, and stars in their paths. My angels heed my voice and my commands to do my will. As you grow from glory to glory, you too will have purpose and become stronger than the angels, but so much more, so much more. For the obedient ones who sacrifice themselves wholly, their lives, their will, will become like my son. You will be my sons and daughters, and Yahshua, Jesus Christ, the anointed Messiah of Israel, will become your big brother. You will stand in rank together. You will take back that which was stolen from humankind. You will restore creation to what I purposed it to be, but you must submit to the process. You must purge your own lives away, away, walk away from sin, turn away from sin and walk in my ways. Sin is the transgression of my law, and it is a foul stink to my nostrils. Walk in the way that I have set forth for you. Do as I tell you to do. My word tells you how to live pleasing lives unto me. Forsake your own interpretations of things. Leave off what you think that you know. Your fathers mixed sin with their twisted idea of grace. All that you have been taught is of this cursed world. Strive not to know the things of the worldly, the things of the heathen, heathen, for they only play at worshipping gods. But those gods are not me, those are idols. They worship the sensual things that make them happy. They seek for little gods that only fulfill their natural needs. I say to you, sp seek after me, and I will heal your broken soul. I will fill your heart with my wisdom, strength, and my gladness, my joy. I will show you the way to go, and in the process, I will gradually make you whole. Wholeness be begins from the inside out, soul, spirit, mind, bone, blood, flesh, and then radiates outward to touch others around you as you progress. 
as you learn and grow, just the shadow of you will take dominion of all in your midst. Your dominion will take hold and join with the dominion I have given others near you. Dominion will unify to restore your neighborhoods, your communities, cities, countries, and more. And they will become mine as they already are. But the people within them will come to me and they will know me as their God. Until you, as my body, have conquered the enemy in every place where he rears up his ugly head to strike. You, my children, when you take your place by my son's side, you will run the enemy off to the ends of the earth. You, my children, will restore that which I have given you from the beginning. Only this time... You will never be fooled into handing it over to your enemy again. Be blessed, my children. I bid you long life and prosperity of your spirit to flow over into your lives and the lives of others, that you will have happiness, comfort, your needs met in abundance, and peace. Thank you very much for listening, and God bless.